And all right, so the first tip I have for you, of course, is to keep in mind the speed of your drift as well as the sea conditions that you might be fishing. Keep in mind, if you have a fast drift and you have a rough sea, right, you have a big swell or you have a lot of wind chop, the boat's moving on the surface of the water, that in and of itself is adding a lot of action to your jigs. So many fish lots out there will just arbitrarily pick a jigging technique or a retrieve or, you know, twitch twitch pause or something like that without actually giving a whole lot of consideration for the conditions that you're fishing in. Now, let me explain. If you do have that fast drift with a lot of sea condition, right? The elements themselves are adding a lot of motion to your jigging. So you don't have to jig as hard. A lot of times if you're jigging super fast in a tough sea with a fast drift, you're putting too much action on that bait and those fish become uninterested. You can see that perfectly well here in this video where JJ, like I said before, was just out fishing everybody because the sea was rough. JJ was not jigging very much at all and he caught a ton of fish. Everybody else on the boat actually slowed down their retrieves to match JJ and just used the drift of the boat and the sea state to load the boat with really nice flatties, flounder, fluke, whatever you want to call them, right? The same can be true, but in the opposite direction. So you could have wind against tide. In this case, you're not going to have a very fast drift at all. And you may have to put a little bit extra juice on that jigging techniques to put that motion into the lure or the bait to trigger the bites. Now, in this case, if you do have wind against tide, it's a great option to actually cast into the wind and retrieve your bait with the current. What will happen is those fish will be looking for baits to come with the current because that's the most natural presentation that you could produce with either bait or artificial lures. And those fish will follow that bait in or they'll be facing into the current waiting for bait to come over it and they'll hit it that way. And again, the trick is, the fun of this whole thing is you get to figure these fish out each and every time that you go fishing. So whether you're jigging really fast to trigger by or whether you're fishing slower to trigger bites, you're gonna have to sort it out one way or the other as you fish. And that really is a lot of the fun of it. Hello again, fish -a -lots. Now in a previous episode, you may have seen little JJ, a seven-year-old, outfish just about everyone on the boat. And we had some pretty heavy hitters on that boat too. When we were flatty fishing, catching some good old fluke or flounder, depending where you live in the country, right? Now, the mistake here is for many, many people is that uh, kids always catch the biggest fish or beginner's luck or blah, blah, blah. I don't buy into any of that. There's a reason why kids or beginners are catching fish and the heavy hitters aren't, and you gotta be paying attention to that stuff. So in this video, I'm gonna show you five tips that go overlooked by tons of fish -a lots out there that are costing you fish. So let's get right into it. And that brings us to our next tip. Each and every day, you have to figure out what the fish want, what their preferences are. Flounder change their preferences all the time, day to day, even tide to tide. It's way more likely that flounder will change their opinions of things than it is for you to use the exact same presentations in an extended period of time and those fish are doing the exact same thing. Trust me, fish lots, I've been doing this a long time. I fished every single day for eight years in order to make money on fishing boats and fish could get extremely finicky. Now, the way to overcome this, especially if you have the opportunity to fish with a group of people, let's say you own a boat or you want to charter a boat, is you have to pay attention to what everybody else around you is doing. Like I said before, JJ was fishing slowly. He was catching fish. The rest of the boat slowed it down. Now, in the beginning of the day, what I typically like to do is if a lot of folks are using, let's say, bait, or a lot of people are using smaller gulp baits and they're fishing quickly or slowly, I like to do the opposite, right? You have an opportunity with four or five of your buddies to switch it up, use different colors, use different jigging techniques, and figure out what those fish want drift to drift. 
if your buddy Bob is catching more fish and he's slowly jigging, well then slow up your jig. If he's jigging faster, speed it up. If he's fishing with a certain color that seems to be producing a lot more fish, change that color. Size is a big one, right? The profile of your baits is huge. So switch it up with a bunch of your buddies. If you got some guys using really big baits, well use a smaller bait, you know? It's just switch it up, you have to figure it out day to day. But it's important to figure out what people are doing around you so that you can match what the fish are telling you they want and you catch more fish. And this kind of brings us to our next tip is you also have to know the gear everybody is using, right? So if you think Bob is fishing a lot slower than you, but he's got a broomstick as a fishing pole, well, the action he's putting on it, even though it looks slowly, is probably quite dramatic. And the opposite could be true too. If he's using a very soft fishing pole, okay, like with a soft tip, and he's using a really erratic kind of jigging motion, well, chances are he's actually not putting that much motion motion on the jig. So that means that those fish are actually honing in on less action than faster action. So that's a good example where you would slow it down. I like that. You see how light the tip is compared to that rod? Mm. You have different action with this. The lighter your tip, the better the action is. It makes it float or better, you know? And that brings us to our next tip, which is don't worry about missed fish. So a fish hits your line and you set the hook and you miss the fish. Well, don't worry about it. Drop that lure right back or the bait right back to that fish. Let that fish know it's still available for that fish to eat. And most likely you will catch some dinner. Well, hopefully it's big enough where you can catch some dinner, but you get the point. I have to get between you. Let me get between you so I can get to it. Oh. All right, just missed a fish. Back down, right back to him. There he goes. And drop it back. Nice. Get him. And now set the hook. Right. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. He felt good when I first set the hook. Yeah, that's a nice one. That's nice and now. Ah, uh, geez, another nice one. Oh, that's nice. Uh, it gets back. Put so a lot of people, what they do is they miss a fish and they want to reel it up. They want to check their lure. They want to make sure the twisty's tail is still on there or the full piece of bait is on there or whatever the case might be. Don't worry about it. If the bait got mangled, fine. Even if everything is still intact, those fish are super curious. And you will see any underwater footage of flounder out there. There is plenty of YouTubers that now have underwater footage of flounder or fluke that are literally following baits for forever. And eventually, they take it. All right, next step here, and I see this so many times with fish a lot, is don't do the super hard hook set. Flounder do not have super hard mouths. You hear that on YouTube all the time. Oh, they got super hard mouths, so you gotta set the hook so hard, you gotta rip that hook right through it. Now, what you're doing is, is you're ripping the hook out of its face. Oh, you can. Oh, you can. Now, in a previous point, I just said flounder will usually come back to get a bait. Well, they won't if you just ripped its jaw out, right? <laughs> and besides, to my previous point, if you set the hook and you miss it, no worries, drop it back and most likely you're gonna catch that fish. So there's no reason to do the super hard hook set. How many times have you reeled up a flounder and you saw that that hook has made a hole in the cartilage right behind the bone of the mouth? Happens all the time. What happens is those flounders have really violent head shakes and if you set the hook too hard and tear a hole in its mouth, the chances are that hook's gonna come out on the fight. Now you will see plenty of times in fishing with Johnny Fish a lot where I'm not trying to get fish lip soup, right? I'm trying to get the whole fish and get the whole fish in the boat. And if you're doing catch and release, it really doesn't benefit you if you're ripping flounder faces off and you're not even gonna eat them or they're not big enough to eat. So you don't have to do the super hard Bassmaster Classic hook set. Just take it easy, set the hook. If you miss a fish, no big deal, drop it back. Fish is most likely gonna take the bait anyway. If that looks goofy, it's because it is. And all right, fish lots. So our last point of the episode, of course, is to preserve your baits. So this applies for both 
actual bait like cut bait and your soft plastic baits. If you're using cut bait, make sure that it's preserved. Put a wet towel over it, stick it in a cooler with ice. Just make sure, you know, it's not rotting in the sun on a bait table or anything like that, right? The fresher the bait, the more likely it is you're gonna catch fluke or flounder. Makes sense, right? Now, gulp is the exact same way. You do not wanna lay your gulp out on the deck while you move spots and dry it out in the sun. A lot of fish lots out there fish with gulp and a lot of fish are caught with gulp. So you really got to pay attention to preserving your gulp baits to always make sure they're primed and ready to go to catch you the most and the biggest fish possible. And if you want to know exactly how to do that, go ahead and click on this episode right here where I go deep into all the tips and tricks to make sure that that gulp bait is working extra hard for you and you don't waste any money. So all right, fish lots, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you out there on the water.